Hi guys, welcome to Master Med Academy. I hope today you guys are doing great. And if you are new to my channel, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and press the bell icon to receive future updates on our new and upcoming videos. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Today we're going to be talking about blood transfusion reaction. Now let's define blood transfusion. Now what is a blood transfusion reaction? It is the destruction of donor RBC by the recipient's immune system. I will repeat, it is a destruction of the donor RBCs by the recipient's immune system, right? And you need to know that the destruction of RBCs, this process is called hemolysis, right? So in my text, I say that blood transfusion reaction is a serious complication that can occur after blood transfusion, of course. And this reaction is when the red blood cells that were given during the transfusion are hemolyzed or are destroyed by the person's immune system, right? And the process is called hemolysis. Now, the last point is the anamnestic response. And this is on re-exposure via transfusion. The patient's memory B cells, very important to know, memory B cells, produces a large surge of antibodies resulting in detectable hemolysis. Now, there are a few types of uh, reactions, a few types of blood transfusion reactions. Now, we're going to go one by one and discuss. Now, the first one is called febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. Now, the name itself says a lot. Febrile means fever, right? High temperature. Non-hemolytic means that there is no hemolysis, i.e. there is no breakdown of RBCs. And it is a type of transfusion reaction. Now, what are the two known mechanisms that are responsible for this type of reaction? The first is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and the second is a fever. Now, the old, let's say the old books or the old theory regarding this was that the host produces antibodies against the donors, WBCs or HLAs. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen, right? This is the old theory. Now, the newer theory says that when the patient's blood was contained in a cold packet, right? Packet of RBCs or packet of blood. There were preformed cytokines present in that packet of blood. So, the cytokines were responsible for causing the fever, right? That is why I put both the theories, the old theory and the new theory. So, let's go through it. So, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction where we had the host antibodies acting against the donor's WBCs. And the fever, it was due to the cytokines created by donor WBCs that accumulate during storage of blood products. So, I hope you understood the pathomechanism. Now, we do something called a leukoreduction here to prevent such a reaction. To know more about it, you can Google it, leukoreduction. And the most important thing is the timing, right? So, post-transfusion, how long does it take for such a reaction to occur? Now, in febrile non hemolytic reaction, it occurs within 1 to 6 hours. This reaction is also more common in children. And it is the most common type of transfusion reaction, very high yield to know. Most common type of transfusion reaction. And what are the symptoms? Of course, we have fever because of the cytokines, preformed cytokines. We have headache, we have chills and flushing. Now, this is a cartoon showing all the type of reactions. And you can see on the top left side here, we have chills under febrile reaction. We have fever, headache, flushing, tachycardia, increased anxiety, right? Now, the second type of reaction is an allergic or anaphylactic reaction. So, I am pretty sure you guys guessed it that this is a type of which hypersensitivity? Yes, you guessed it right. This is type 1 hypersensitivity. So that's why my first point says in green, bolded and underlined, type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Now, it occurs against plasma proteins in transfused blood, right? So here we have allergy causing antigens from the donor's blood and the recipient's immune system act against it, right? And the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction involves basically which immunoglobulins? IgE immunoglobulins, right? So the IgE, the FC portion of IgE will bind the mast cells and the antigen will bind to the FAP portion of the IgE and that leads to degranulation of mast cells. Now the timing for this kind of reaction is within minutes to 2 to 3 hours. So it's quite faster than the first one, febrile non hemolytic reaction. The symptoms, obviously we have itching, which is also called pruritus. Urticaria is a rash, hypotension, wheezing, anaphylactic shock, respiratory arrest. Now, all of this is because of histamine, which is a vasoactive amine. Now, histamine, if you just want to remember two things about it, you should remember it causes bronchoconstriction and vasodilation. That's it. 
Now this is a type of anaphylactic reaction post transfusion. So the next is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is a type of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and the pathomechanism here is that it could be due to ABO group incompatibility meaning that you gave the wrong blood group or wrong blood to the wrong blood group person right for example let's say that there is a person uh, with a blood group a right so obviously this person will have antigens what antigens will he have on his rbc right a antigens so he has antigen a on his rbc and in his blood he has antibodies against b blood group b right so if you give this patient so this is the patient and if you give this patient blood group B, right, then there will be massive hemolysis. Why? Because he has antibody B against the blood group B. So that's why there is massive hemolysis. So this is one of the reasons why there is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction, right? I hope you guys understood the incompatibility of the blood groups. The second is the host antibody reaction towards a foreign antigen on donor RBC, right? Let's say that the donor gave me his blood RBC and there are many antigens on RBC and let's say I make antibodies to one of those, right? And that could be the second reason why there is an acute hemolytic reaction. Now, the next is the timing. Now, this occurs during transfusion or within 24 hours. Why? Because we have preformed antibodies to the donor RBC. Like in our example, we had the preformed anti-B antibodies, right? So that is how it works. Now, what are the symptoms? Now, there is massive hemolysis, massive intravascular hemolysis. So there will be hemoglobinuria, means you will be having blood or hemoglobin in your urine. There will be jaundice. And jaundice is due to extravascular hemolysis, right? When you have an extravascular hemolysis, you have massive amounts of bilirubin that is released. And because of the bilirubin, you have scleral icterus, conjunctiva, and yellowing of the skin this is called jaundice so jaundice is due to increased bilirubin all right then we could have fever hypotension tachycardia flank pain shortness of breath right so i hope you guys understood this now let's try to understand transfusion related acute lung injury or in short form we call it trolley now let's imagine that this is a lung this is a outline of a lung and let's imagine that there is a blood vessel that goes through it, right? Let's say that we have some antigens which are present on the pulmonary endothelial cells, right? So you know that the vessels, they have an endothelial cell like this, right? So these are the endothelial cells. Let me make them here as well. Now let's imagine that we have antigens stuck to those endothelial cells. So let me make them with blue. So these are blue antigens, right? Yeah. So what happens is when we transfuse a donor blood, right, into the recipient, the donor blood already has preformed antibodies against these antigens present on the endothelial cells of the pulmonary vasculature. Now, what happens? Let's see. So let's imagine that these are the antibodies the green antibodies that came from the donor's blood right so this will attack the antigens on the pulmonary endothelial cells and that would lead to what you guessed it right that leads to capillary leak and increased capillary permeability now what happens if there is an increased capillary permeability let me draw it here so now what happens is that we will have vascular leak so we'll have the blood that will be leaking out and when the blood or when the fluid will leak out right then what will happen there will be liquid in the lung and then there will be lung congestion and that would lead to pulmonary edema now when we have pulmonary edema right or when we have fluid in our lungs what will happen what will be the symptom what will the patient tell the doctor he will say i have shortness of breath right and we call it dyspnea or dyspnea be silent and remember that this is not a cardiogenic pulmonary edema right this is a non cardiogenic please write it down it's a non cardiogenic pulmonary edema non cardiogenic 
right? Why non-cardiogenic? Because the heart is not the reason why this pulmonary edema is occurring. It is because of this antigen-antibody interaction. But we do observe the same phenomenon when we have a left ventricular heart failure that we call congestive heart failure that I'll talk about in some other video. But you need to remember that this is a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, right? So what do I say in my text? I say that in Trali, we have donor antibodies reacting against recipient neutrophils and pulmonary endothelial cell. Now this phenomenon will lead to inflammation, increased capillary permeability, very high yield and edema, pulmonary edema. Now this occurs within minutes to six hours post transfusion and the symptoms are non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema and respiratory distress. Now you have a respiratory distress here so it's a really serious complication and the treatment for this is just supportive, right? Supportive treatment you need to give oxygen because obviously there is a pulmonary edema and he has trouble breathing. Now on the left side you can clearly see a patient uh, who has trolley, right? And you can clearly see the cloudy lung here. This is all fluid in his lung, right? And on the right side after treatment, after supportive care, you can see it's quite normal, right? The last type of reaction is delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction. And here we have that anamnestic response. Now, anamnestic response to a foreign antigen on donor RBC, which was previously encountered by recipient. Then it is most commonly due to RH group, right? We have RH positive and RH negative blood group or other minor blood, minor blood groups like KID antigen, like Duffy, Kel. They are minor antigens. Now, what is the timing? It could be days to weeks. And this is due to the slow destruction by reticular endothelial cells. Now, what are the symptoms? They are self-limited and they're usually clinically silent. And we have mild fever and hyperbilirubinemia, right? And this is again the same cartoon. Now, here is a summary and it shows you everything that you need to know regarding a blood transfusion reaction, right? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. And uh, I hope at least now you're clear regarding the terms at least what blood transfusion reaction and the types mean. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop your comments. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.